Hi and welcome to exercise 8 where we're looking at using the corner pin data in Final Cut Pro and Motion. So uh, let's see how these work out. So I've got my uh, footage uh, tracked in that we, uh, we used in a slightly earlier exercise. And let's come in and just export out our tracking data. Now I'm going to take this out first to Final Cut Pro as a Final Cut Distort here. And uh, again, we're going to save this out here. And we will call this one Corner Pin FCP. And let's pop into Final Cut Pro 7. Okay, and uh, as before, let's import our XML file here. And we'll just come to the right folder and bring in our Final Cut Pro XML file. And as we did when we were using just the uh, regular transform data, we'll leave all of this basically as the default here. And again, just as it did when we came in with our tr uh, transform data, we get an exceedingly long title here. So the first thing I always do is just get rid of that big title there. Uh, another thing to look out for in the item properties here, if I just right click, bring the item properties up. If you are using um, 1080p footage, Final Cut Pro 7 does have a lovely habit of uh, misinterpreting the field dominance here. Uh, so I'm just going to right click, change that to none, hit OK. Uh, and let's bring our clip down on the timeline, hit yes on that one. And and as before, we can check out and see that it actually has got all of our data in there, looking lovely. Let's fit that to the window again, hit motion, and you can see this time we've got our distort being the one all nicely keyframed up. But again, it's applying it to the uh, the master clip, and that's not really what I'm after in this case. So I'm just going to import another couple of files. I'm going to bring in my bring in my big texture here. And while I'm here, I'll also bring in my small texture. And all right, so let's put in my original footage down here, lovely. And bring in my big texture over the top. And we're basically going to do the same as we did previously. So I'm going to just copy, right click and copy, and then right click again and paste attributes. And this time, guess what we're going to be pasting in? The distort attributes here. So if I turn off my overlays just for one moment, and we can play that back. And we can see that's fitting in nicely. And if I look at my distort, there we go. We've got all the distort up there as we expect. Let's come in with my small texture here. Now my small texture is 1100 by 619. So that's significantly smaller than the 1920 by 1080 sequence I've got. And then when I bring it in, you can see that it's scaled it up to 174.47. So let's see what happens when I try and paste the attributes in here. Bring in my distort. And it all fits in nicely. Now if it hadn't scaled it up, if my scale was still set to 100, and we'll do the paste attributes again, you can see it's not going to fit in properly. So that's why it's important if we go to our user preferences here, and we go to editing, that we have always scale clips to sequence size turned on. So that means that when we drop our non correct size clip in the, uh, in the sequence, it's going to automatically scale it up to the correct values here. So that if we do do the paste attributes here, going to fit in nicely. But that's working with it in Final Cut Pro 7. Let's have a look at how we can um, work with it in Motion. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. Let's export out our tracking data, come to Motion Corner Pin, copy this to the clipboard, and save this out as a Motion document. And we will call this one Corner Pin motion one 
and then in motion we'll just open this up and again let's just open the original up for us so in motion now let's fit this to a window we see we've got our surface coming on let's uh, change the project settings Make sure that's set to uh, progressive. We'll just bring that in there. Cool. Okay. So again, like as before, we have our base clip. We have our surface, and if we look at the uh, the inspector on the surface, we can see we've got our four corner pin going on there. Lovely. All right. So let's come back into our file browser. And start with our big, big texture here. So what are we going to do with this? Let's come into our library again here. And as before, we'll use the head up display and drop the surface into the image well there. And under the type, instead of transformation, we're going to set that to four corners. And that now, actually that's bring all of that back. Thank you very much. And that now is going to match in our texture as we need it to. And if we come to our properties over here, you can see the four corners are being affected because we're linking it through our behavior. If we want to check that out with a bit of motion blur, we can see what the motion blur is doing. Now, if you take a look here, the motion blur itself isn't quite matching the actual footage. You can see it's a little bit, a little bit off. If we want to change that, let's go to our, well, actually have nothing selected. And let, well, let's just come into our project properties here and we can take a look at our motion blur. And so this this stage where we can start to change the uh, the shutter angle up a little bit, so we can match it in a little bit better here. Now what we can't do, we can change the the uh, the samples up as well to give a night a bit of a smoother uh, blur as well. What we can't do is we can't change the the motion blur phase, so we can't sort of match it a hundred percent. But you can see just by taking the motion blur down a little bit there and improving the quality of it, we've actually done quite a, a good, a good job matching that in. Cool. So that's that's matching in with the uh, with the big texture. Let's see how we can match in with the small texture. Bring that in, we'll turn off our big texture, but we will come into our library again, into motion tracking and do the same sort of match move. Drag my surface into the image well, set that to four corners. And bring this back to the start so we can see it properly. And again, we have the same problem that we saw in uh, in Final Cut, where things weren't quite scaled up properly. And we'll turn the um, turn the motion blur off a second, just so we've got faster update speed. There we go. Now, the cool thing about having a uh, a behavior driving this property is the fact that we can come into our inspector, into our properties here, and we can just scale up on the fly to get that properly matching in. And we can see exactly what we're doing without any, uh, without any rendering. Cool. Now there is one other way of using corner pin data. So if we pop back into, uh, into Mocha Pro again and take a look at our surface, we can see our surface is matched up to the four corners 
of the card here. Now, another way of, of using that same data is to use an aligned surface. So this is this is actually mainly used for um, for when we're, we're painting on our, our background here. So what I've got to try and replicate that is in Photoshop. We have a first frame coming up here. And what I've done is I have matched in the texture into the original frame. So this is the frame that we're going to be taking out. Now, usually what we use this for is for doing uh, background cleanup or object removal. So we have our, uh, our first frame or a frame from the, uh, from the clip that we're working on. And we take that into Photoshop and we just use the clone tools just to paint out various different things that we don't want in the background. Then we track that shot, track that background shot, and then to replicate the, um, the distortion you get when, when panning the camera, moving the camera, we use the aligned surface to, to get us a, a, a nice matched in result. So let's see how that works out. I'm just gonna uh, duplicate up my layer here and we'll turn off perspective two. And I'm going to come to my first frame because it's the frame that I've painted and I'm going to click my line surface button. Boom. And what that's done now, if I turn on my insert clip, turn the logo on there, what that's done now is it's brought in my surface and pushed it out to the corners here. But when I play it back, we still keep in the movement that we had before. So it's, it's done a offset track or relative track. So now what happens when I export this tracking data, I'm gonna uh, save this out as another motion project, of course, let's call this motion two. And let's open this one up. Cool, so let's play this back. Well, let's bring this back to fit to window. We see that's working in the same sort of way. So we'll come in and we'll bring in, actually comes to the first frame here, and we'll come in our, bring in our painted texture there. Lovely. And we'll do the same things we did before. So go to the library, behaviors, motion tracking, match move, surface into the image well, type, four corners. And let's take a look, see what's going on there. And that's brought that in absolutely perfectly. This really isn't the perfect project to to show it on because, you know, if we were doing this kind of this kind of project in real life, you know, obviously this is this is going to be just a regular corner pin. But if you're uh, wanting to do object removal and doing some sort of background painting, and you just want to match the camera. This is a, uh, and you, the camera is panning across a, a cityscape or something like that. You know, this is actually a great way of matching not only the movement of the camera, but also that slight distortion that you get as you pan the camera around. Uh, you can see here, because we painted in on the very first frame, where it's not quite, uh, not quite in view still, when we move this through, we're still chopping out that little corner there. But that's, you know, that's totally expected. If we didn't want that, what we do is obviously pick a completely different frame uh, as our start frame. Cool, so I hope that's given you a good idea of how to use the corner pin data in Apple Motion and Final Cut Pro 7. In the next exercise, we're gonna be looking at another way of using that tracking data, this time to do stabilization.